Hello and welcome to another episode of Imminent Collections. Today I'm taking a look through my anime, DVD and Blu-ray collection. So the kind of reason for this actually is I was going through my YouTube analytics a little while ago and I found that one of the most popular searches that led people to my channel was anime Blu-ray collection or anime DVD collection or something. And I thought, huh, that's weird. I've got loads. I I've been buying anime on DVD since I was a teenager. And I thought, I've actually got a lot in my collection. Maybe I should show it off. And that is why I'm doing it today. So it's going to be a long one. I think this is going to be in multiple parts. Obviously, I can't tell yet, but... Um, you might want to grab a little snack or something, this might take us a couple hours. Two things uh, just off the top, just to sort of establish the rules. First off, these are series I have watched. Um, so if you've seen my Christmas mystery Blu-ray boxes and stuff, you might notice I pulled a lot of DVDs and Blu-rays from there that aren't in this video. And that's purely because I haven't got room to watching them yet. Um, my kind of caveat for collections is I only keep series I really enjoyed or I think I'll watch again or something. Um, so, you know, if, if you do see a bit of discrepancy there, that explains it. Uh, I might do a follow-up in like a year's time. I might make it a yearly thing of like, this is what I've added to the collection this year and whatnot. Um, and the second caveat is obviously I live in the UK, which means some series here might have a different name or they might have different covers, obviously they'll have a different age rating because sort of it, it's different. So if you do live in the US or a different country, if some of the DVDs or Blu-rays look a bit weird, that is why, because I live in a different country. Um, and obviously a lot of the publishers are going to be different too. Like over here we have a company called All The Anime, Manga, MVM, so you'll see a lot of those names pop up, uh, obviously, you know, around the world. Discotech, I think, in the US release a lot of stuff. We don't have that over here. So, without further ado, and uh, without any more rambling, I am going to get straight on to it. All of these DVDs, are so uh, DVDs and Blu-rays are sorted in alphabetical order. There's no distinction between series and movies. So I might have, like, movie, movie, series, movie, or, you know, otherwise... Basically, I just don't want to do the extra work of sorting them into it. Anyway, I'll stop rambling now. Our first um, DVD, actually, up is... 5 Centimeters Per Second by Makoto Shinkai. This is a anime movie. There's a decent chance you've heard of this. It's quite well known uh, at this point. This is kind of... This was the movie Shinkai released just before Your Name, which was a huge movie. Ironically, actually, something I don't have on Blu-ray. I, I need to buy that. But this was my first introduction to Makoto Shinkai. Friend showed it to me, uh, and it is beautiful. It is truly heartbreaking. It's about an hour long. It's technically three kind of OVAs, uh, but you kind of watch them in the same way you'd a movie. It's got a reversible cover there, which is very nice. I prefer this one because you've got the full artwork. That's the disc, in case you're really that interested. But yeah, highly recommended uh, in terms of Anime movies, I think this is one of my top. Uh, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take too long to talk about any of these series. I'm just gonna give a flying uh, summary of them. And next up is pretty much the opposite of five centimeters per second. That is Afro Samurai. So this is the complete murder session set, which comes with Afro Samurai and Afro Samurai Resurrection, which is the movie. So for those of you who don't know, this is a bit of an older one now. Um, one notable thing about it is that it's voiced, or one of the characters at least, is voiced by Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, he is quite a cool dude, so the fact that he voiced this is pretty cool. Um, also, so Afro Samurai itself, which is this, the series director's cut technically, there you go, he is actually credited there. This is only five episodes, so this is a bit of an OVA series, uh, more than it is a sort of, you know, 12 episode thing. Uh, I'll take up the disc to show you. That is Kuma. That's the kind of one of his opponents. It is a very stylish series. Incredibly flashy. Um, you can easily get through this in an afternoon, honestly. And of course, they did release Afro Samurai Resurrection, which was a kind of follow-up, um, a sequel. Personally, I thought Afro Samurai was a bit better than Resurrection. But, I mean, I didn't dislike this either. I think it's more more of the same, more of that beautiful action and I was such a fan of Afro Samurai at the time that 
I also bought the special edition of Resurrection. This is partly because it was actually on offer. Um, for those of you in the UK, HMV is where I bought this. This is an exclusive, I want to say. Or maybe the art book is exclusive. So if I can get it out, the DVD is the exact same, as you can tell. Um, however, there is an art book. I'm not going to flip through all of it, but uh, it is pretty nice, you know, to sort of see. There's some behind the scenes footage and stuff. There's some, uh, you know, pre production stills and stuff like that. Very nice. Again, I, I was just getting into buying anime on DVD and Blu-ray when I saw this. So the fact I own the same movie twice, you know, that's um, that's something I kind of learnt, you know, a long time ago. It's like, eh, it is kind of wasting a bit of money. I do like the slipcover and everything, but, you know, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say if you're a big fan, go out and get this and that. But, you know, anyway, next up is a movie I don't think really needs much introduction, and that is Akira. So chances are, if you're aware of uh, anime movies at all, or anime in general really, you've probably heard of Akira. So this is the Steelbook edition that came out a few years ago, I want to say. Um, I didn't have it on Blu-ray or DVD, so as it happened I just got this. I'm not a massive lover of Steelbooks, just because I don't know, the, the spine kind of messes up order unless you have all steel books basically, but this version did come with quite a comprehensive, I remember reading this a while ago, it's kind of a, um, it's a kind of documentary of the creation of the series, it goes into like the creation of the music, the visuals, the history of its release over here and stuff. Uh, this is very nice, I don't know if this steel book specifically is kind of like I wouldn't say rare, but you know, it's out of print, I imagine, by now. Um, I did go and see Akira in 4K in the cinema, actually, a few years ago. That was very nice, but this is a very nice version of it as well. Uh, you know, but I don't need to go on much about Akira. If you're watching this, you've probably heard of it. Next up is a series you might not have heard of, and that is Anti-Magic Academy, the 35th Test Platoon. <laughs> Uh, so this I watched pretty recently, actually. This is the All the Anime Special Edition. Um, as I mentioned at the start, I do like doing anime Blu-ray mystery boxes, and this came in it. This is the Special Edition mystery box. So as you can see, all of the uh, outside and stuff has character art. It comes all in one disc. It's a 12-episode anime. Um, it, I'll be honest, it is a little bit slice of lifey. It's kind of a bit of a harem series as well. You've got the one protagonist. No, hang on. There we are. He's the one male protagonist. The rest of the pe girls in his group are various types of anime girl stereotypes. It does come with some very nice art cards as well. Most of them are the kind of covers for the Blu-ray and stuff. But uh, very nice regardless. The character designs are really captivating. I'm really drawn to some of these character designs. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's sort of an amazing series, but I keep it because it's sort of, it, it's quite a comfy series. It's something I can easily see myself re-watching, you know, a few times. Um, she is best girl, actually, as it happens. This uh, Usagi something, I want to say. She's she's a rabbit type character. But yeah, pretty fun series. Not, you know, not not... Not a 10 out of 10, but you know, it's a solid 7. Anyway, on to the next one. And that is Ao Haru X Machine Gun. So this is a series I bought purely because it was something like 3 or £4 pounds on a Christmas sale on all the anime. Uh, as you will see, that is a running theme. I do quite like all the anime. This is the alternative cover. I think I changed it up with the normal cover, which I'll get the discs out to show you. Uh, so that is... Uh, that is the normal cover. Um, and this, again, is not a very well-known series, I suppose. It's about an airsoft society. Um, and Ao... Uh, actually, I can't remember her name now, but the main girl who gets mistaken for a boy uh, joins the airsoft society. And kind of, you know, there's, there's a little bit of tension, there's a little bit of romance. There's a lot of uh, airsoft nudery and sort of gun, you know, etiquette and talk and stuff. Honestly, it's pretty cool. I do love series like this that focus on, like, a niche thing because it's clear 
that the creators are very much into it and it kind of I know it's it's an interesting introduction to that world I'm not into airsoft I probably never would be but I found this really interesting this is like just the right level of niche but also entertaining it's uh, it's 12 episodes it's worth a watch if it sums up your alley um you know very comfy on to the next one and that is the apple seed movie now I don't know a ton about apple seed it says it's from the creator of Ghost in the Shell, and I want to say it's based on a manga that he wrote, not necessarily that the movie is from the same studio that made the Ghost in the Shell movie, but I could be wrong here. Um, I can't remember... Uh, Barbatos? No, 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 that's the Gundam, isn't it? I can't remember his name, but he has a really cool design. I love the, like, rabbit ears on the mech kind of body. So this is a bit of an older... DVD, as you can see, because uh, it comes with one of these cool fold-outs that'll uh, tell you about what the latest big movies from sort of the more niche um, niche companies are releasing and stuff. And this comes with two discs, I want to say, because I think this second one is special features, as you will see with a lot of things like this. This is a really cool movie. It's... Um, Visually very stunning. It's sort of uh, it's a cyberpunk kind of thing. Obviously, I mean the guy that wrote Ghost in the Shell. It's I I do know his name, but it's not coming to me. But um, yeah, I mean if you liked Ghost in the Shell, I think you'd like Apple Seed. And if you liked Apple Seed, you'll probably like the sequel, Apple Seed X Machina. Or I think it's the sequel anyway. I watched this with a friend years ago. It's been a while actually since I've watched either of these. I did get the feeling that I was missing something. Maybe there's an Appleseed series, or maybe this takes place further in the manga or something, but they didn't bridge the two, because it did feel like there were one or two plot elements that I didn't fully understand. Like, they, they'd introduce characters and stuff that I don't remember. Uh, but this is a slipcase version, if I can get it out. Hey, there you go. Take a quick look inside. Uh, this comes in... In two discs as well, again, I think there is um, special features on the other disc. This, again, is very visually stunning. I think this is the one that has a really cool scene of um, him being down an alleyway and some thugs running down and sort of turning around his cape flows and he sort of shoots them with a, um, with a very large gun. Yeah, th these are just really fun movies. There's a lot going on, and I'm sure if I rewatched them, maybe I'd pick up on like the background plot or whatever. But if you're looking for like a fairly action-heavy uh, cyberpunk movie that's kind of in the vein of Ghost in the Shell, I think Apple Seed is pretty darn good. And rounding out the is is Azua Lane. So this is a bit of a more recent release as well. Um, take a look at the back. As it says there, it is based on the mobile game Azua Lane, which I've spent quite a while in, to be honest. Uh, it is a very fun game, so we'll take a look inside. It comes on one disc, uh, as actually no, it comes on two discs, sorry. Um, it's a 12 episode series, I do believe, and ironically actually, uh, the code is to redeem on Funimation. I'm pretty sure this week it was announced that Funimation is closing down. So um, this digital code is completely useless. And as well, I think, is a good justification for the timing of this video, because I know this takes up a lot of room. You know, physical anime does take up uh, quite a few shelves, especially if you really get into it. But it is also kind of useful, because uh, I don't think this is on Crunchyroll. I think this is on Funimation. Now, if I wanted to legally watch as it will in, in, say, two or three months' time, I might not be able to. Now, I'm not against sailing the seven seas, okay? If uh, if you want to watch anime, you know, I, I ain't got nothing against it. But that's why I like owning physical media, because I know that whenever I want to rewatch as it will in, or lend it to a friend, or show a friend, apart from episode six, that is the uh, uncensored bath episode, uh, which I was unaware of, and... Wow, they, they really did not censor everything there, um, which is great. <laughs> I ain't complaining. Um, I, I can just pop it in whatever Blu-ray player I have. Uh, and that's why I've watched a ton of series digitally that I'll never own physically. 
But for the ones I really, really enjoyed, or I assumed I'd enjoy, which is I pre-ordered this without ever watching the anime, you know, I I think it's worth it. It does take up room, but ultimately, you know, it's, it's yours. You, you always have freedom to watch it whenever you want, regardless of if a, you know, company decides to just shut its doors one day, and that's it. Anyway, on to the next one, and that is back one. So this is the first DVD I have which is uh, still sealed and that's just because I bought the DVD not too long after actually watching the series on Crunchyroll. But I saw it on sale for a very good price so I thought I'd grab it. As you can tell from the uh, outer design though, this much like Aoharu X Machine Gun is a slightly niche anime. It's about cute girls who love motorcycles and join an after school club. It's very cute, it's very uh, comfy. It's a bit like K-On, but about bikes, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not into motorcycles or anything, but much like Aoharu X Machine Gun, it was the right level of nerdy without being sort of too difficult for outsiders to understand. And yeah, this is just, it's just a very fun series. If you do get a chance and you're into sort of cute girls doing cute things and maybe sort of motorcycles, I recommend giving this a go. Alright, next up are a few individual DVDs that make up most of a series, and that is Beck Mongolian Chop Squad. Now, I think the subtitle Mongolian Chop Squad um, is, is only, I don't know if it's just in the UK or maybe just Europe, maybe it is a US thing as well, but the name of the series is just Beck, really, I, I think that's just a subtitle, because maybe the artist Beck had a... I don't know, trademark on his name. So that is volume one of Beck. We'll take a quick look at the back. And inside, uh, oh, actually, it does have some artwork of the characters. Now, if you haven't seen Beck, it is a fairly, I wouldn't say realistic necessarily, but a fairly grounded series about a band. Uh, oh, okay, maybe that won't stand on its own, or maybe it, no, okay. That is volume two. Uh, I kept this sticker on as well. I don't always keep stickers on my DVDs, but I thought that was very apt because you can win a Les Paul, that is the same makers. He has, I can't remember his name. I can't remember the name of any of these characters. It was about, it's about 10 years ago. I watched this series. So, oh, actually I think the artwork inside is the exact same. It's also back in the day, there were these little, um, questionnaire things that you could like fill out and I think I, I don't know if you'd get something for it but it's kind of like a questionnaire I know in Japan they still do that quite a lot that they'll send out little leaflets you can uh, you know mail back to the company to let let them know what you think of the anime or the manga um, and you know they, they usually take that on board that is the third volume uh, there is the back there and I want to say the inside oh no the inside is different, okay. Oh, the inside is basically like a kind of poster version of uh, of the front cover. That's kind of cool. Again, it has been a while since I've watched any of these. And of course, we have volume four. With uh, So we've got the, the lineup, I want to say, apart from the girl. I think that there's a girl that the main character kind of, kind of falls in love with, sort of. And again, this is the front cover, uh, the sort of like poster-wise. They're probably thinking, "Oh, cool. Okay, so it's just it's just a series with four volumes in. That's kind of weird. Usually, they'd be five, especially because how many episodes are on each? There you go. This is fifteen to eighteen. I mean, more series, twenty-four series. If it goes above twelve, it's usually twenty-four. Well, you're right. It does. Um, but that's all they released in the UK. They they never released any other DVDs. So, I do have the full run of Beck, Mongolian Chop Squad. It's just, it's not the full series. Uh, I watched the rest of it online on an illegal site because, I mean, I don't consider it that, uh, you know, sort of that I'm missing, uh, you know, I'm depriving the company of money because, I mean, if they're not gonna sell me the rest of the series, then I don't consider it, you know, piracy really. Uh, even though technically, I guess it is. But yeah, Beck is a very good series. I think the soundtrack is pretty darn cool too. I reckon, you know, if you enjoyed K-On or something, but want it a little bit grittier, a little bit more realistic, I reckon Beck is a good call. Next up 
is something just as realistic, and that's Beyblade. Uh, as you'll notice, this is volume two. This is all I have on DVD. Back in the day, I believe I had volume one on VHS. Uh, and this goes to show how old the uh, DVDs are. There are four episodes on each disc. Now, I know technically there are, you know, releases these days that sort of, you know, this series, part one of series one or whatever, but um, back in the day they really did kind of drip feed it. I mean, this, this DVD could have easily fit like eight episodes, but uh, the only reason I have this, I bought this at a car boot sale for like 50 pence. At one point I did want to try collecting them all on DVD. I kind of looked into it, but it's one of those things that you get a lot with a lot of long-running series that, like, randomly, I don't know, volume 5, the only listing you'll find is, like, £85 or something. It's like, I'd like them on DVD, but if it's, you know, if it's going to cost me more than, like, 40 or £50, it's, I, I just don't care. Um, I think all of Beyblade, actually, is up on YouTube. Uh, at least it was a few years ago. I don't know if they've taken it down now, but I did enjoy the original Beyblade anime. It's one of the one of the series that really got me into anime, especially as a kid. Obviously, before I really knew what anime was, this was a classic. This is sort of episode again five, six, seven, and eight. I want to say it's when Ray shows up, and uh, I think they start building the team. I can't remember. Uh, I watched a bit more on YouTube, but. Yeah, I, I've got a soft spot for Beyblade, though. I, I don't know. Maybe these days the DVDs are cheaper, or they're more expensive. Who knows? Anyway, on to the next one. Another fairly recent pickup, and that is Birthday Wonderland. So this, again, is a all the anime special edition. So I'll show you exactly what that is. That is the outside and back. So this is a movie. Um, I did keep the back card. Sadly, I had to fold it up because it doesn't fully fit in there. Uh, this is a particularly very pretty movie. So that is the kind of running theme with a lot of... Oh, ooh, good lord, a disc has come loose. Uh, that is the running theme with a lot of all the anime special editions and stuff I have. A lot of these movies, I mean, a lot of modern anime movies are particularly pretty anyway. This is quite a whimsical uh, series. It's about a girl who essentially goes into another world to help help them find, uh, I think it's a lost dragon or a lost uh, prince or something. It also comes with a art book and kind of behind the scenes thing. This is... Um, Honestly, it gives me pretty strong Studio Ghibli vibes. It's quite whimsical. The world is kind of like full and bustling and sort of... I don't know, it's... it's. Chances are, if you've seen Ghibli films, you know the kind of setup that it's like a girl is thrown into a world she's never been to, but sort of throughout it all, you know, she comes across strange and wacky and whimsical characters who, you know, help her on her journey. Definitely worth a watch, I'd say. It's about an hour and a half, I think. It's very pretty. Um, it's just it's just a feel-good movie, you know. I definitely recommend it. I was definitely happy I got the special edition. I hadn't seen it until I'd seen this, but after watching it, I was like, man, I'm glad I've got something really nice, because uh, it is a very nice movie. On to the next one. And that is something that is quite opposite to Whimsical, and that is Blood, the Last Vampire. Oh, sorry, Blood... Uh, no, I, so I don't know if this is actually related to Blood Plus. I've never watched Blood Plus, I've heard of it. But this is a... it's a fairly short movie. It's, I want to say, 40... yeah, 48 minutes. Um, it's kind of almost an OVA, but it's not quite. Um, the, the basic premise is it's about a school that's taken over by vampires. Uh, this is a movie I got for a very cheap price online. I want to say it was like £2 or £3 or something back in the day. This was, I think, my first anime Blu-ray as well, which is another reason I bought it, because like, it's cheap. It's a Blu-ray. I've never watched anime on Blu-ray before. It's pretty good. It's not my favourite um, movie by any means, but I think it is definitely at least worth a watch. I quite like it. The art style is a little bit strange as well. It's kind of that early blend of 3D and animated. Um, yeah, you know, generally worth a watch. I'm happy to add it to my collection. Next up is a big one, uh, and that is a big collection. 
And that is Bubblegum Crisis. So as you can see, the box has seen better days. It's quite an old one. It's by MVM. This is from quite a few years ago now. So I won this in an online uh, charity auction recently. Well, I'll say recently, in the last year or so. Um, and that is, is that volume four? Yeah, hang on, sorry. Uh, so, for those of you unaware, Bubblegum Crisis is a late 80s, early 90s kind of almost OVA series, I want to say, because the episodes do begin as sort of 25 minute episodes, but they do change in lengths and stuff, and they're not necessarily, they don't always follow an order, the sort of usually. Usually per disc has a, like an arc, but I think the last one doesn't. Um, as you can see from the artwork as well, this is very 80s. Uh, nothing inside, but there's about three or four episodes on each. This is disc three. And that is the back. And then this one, so this isn't um, an episode, actually. This is the music of Bubblegum Crisis. And... It's actually two live performances by the cast uh, performing music from the series, which, if you've seen Bubblegum Crisis, you'll know that the music is phenomenal. It is 80s Japanese pop to the max. And honestly, highly recommended. If you've not seen Bubblegum Crisis, I recommend giving it a watch. I may one day track down a Blu-ray or something, but I do kind of like the old DVD aesthetic as well. It takes me back to sort of the early 2000s when anime was just kicking off. But yeah, definitely one of the highlights of my collection, I'd say, so far. Next up is Buso Shinki, Armored War Goddess. So this is an anime, again, that I watched kind of recently. Uh, it's based off plastic model kits, I think, called Buso Shinki. They're sort of like Gunpla, but obviously they're anime girls. This, again, I picked up for kind of cheap uh, on the sale. And to be honest, I really enjoyed it. It's um, it's just it's just very comfy, basically. But I was impressed by how kind of creative it was. So it's twelve episodes. The setup is that a guy has a small, essentially harem of Buso Shinki, uh, cute girls with different personalities, and each episode is kind of self-contained. There's one or two that you know feed into other ones. But honestly, there's quite a lot of variety, even though they've got the sort of like the beach episode, the uh, the contest episode, the racing episode, stuff like that. Honestly, I found them really charming. It's, um, I don't know, it, it's not a series I'd, you know, tell people to rush out and go see, but uh, if you're in the mood for something kind of cute, something, you know, kind of comfy, slice of life, definitely recommend Buso Shinki. And next up is a series, honestly, I'd recommend to most people, and that is Chobbits. So, this is a bit of an old one. This is actually the first non-shonen anime I properly watched from start to finish. Sort of, it was the first series that was under, you know, 100 episodes in length. And honestly, I, it, it's sort of, it's a bit nostalgic, but it's something I really genuinely love as well. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of about... It's a bit of a futuristic series about um, personal persicoms, which are essentially robots, like Chi on the cover there. Um, and they're all androids that kind of serve their human masters and stuff, but Chi, who is the main character, is a bit different. She seems to sort of have a will of her own, and the story is all about that. That's the alternative cover? I wonder, actually, no, I don't think it is. No, I think that those are just bits of artwork. So, this is based off a very popular manga as well, of course, called Chobits. Uh, chances are, if you've never heard of Chobits, you probably got into anime, you know, after like 2012, 2013. This is quite a big series when I was getting into anime, sort of like mid-2000s, 2007, 2008 and stuff like that. But I honestly think this is a genuinely very entertaining series. It's a little bit dated now, um, and... It is kind of slice of life. A lot of the episodes are Chi doing cute things, um, you know, and sort of getting used to how humans live and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend giving it a watch if you're open to that kind of series. Next up is a series I've actually only watched season one of. I know there's a lot more. There's like a couple of series. There's a few movies now as well. And I think continuations after those movies. 
And that is Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion. So I'll take off the um, the slip here. That's what the outside slip looks like. Um, this is another pretty famous series. Chances are you've probably at least heard of it, if not seen it by now. Um, it's honestly it's something I really enjoy. It's at least season one anyway. I'd almost um, describe this like a, a, some kind of combination between like Death Note and Gundam or something. There's a lot of mechs in it, but there's a lot of like political intrigue and stuff. And Lelouch has that ability, which I, I won't spoil if you've not seen it, but it does turn. It, it does turn some situations on their heads or sort of introduce new things. I really enjoyed Code Geass. I do need to watch season two and stuff, but I just, I've never got round to it. But I will, you know, I'll probably buy that uh, at some point because I might as well buy the rest now I've got the first season, you know, physically. But yeah, very much enjoyed this. And next up is a series I think very much enjoy as an understatement, and that is Cowboy Bebop. Chances are, if you're at all into anime, you know what this series is. Uh, Cowboy Bebop is historic. This, I think this is the type of series that even people who aren't into anime enjoy because it's just, it's such a good series. So I'm gonna try and angle my camera, hang on. So this is a bit of an interesting collection. This is a six disc collection, but it sort of folds out in a weird way. Now I know there is a Blu-ray collection of this as well that I am thinking of getting, but honestly I really like this DVD collection as well. It's quite chunky. It's a little bit older now. I assume this is out of print. But again, with the Blu-ray on offer, you know, it's not necessarily that it's going to be rare or wanted. Uh, there you go, a nice jet there. Got a nice, nice picture of all of them. Yeah, honestly, Cowboy Bebop is... I mean, it's a classic, man. It's um, it's easily one day I will do my anime nine by nine video. You can you, you you already you already know this is going to be on that because it's such a good series. Every episode is just there's not much I can say about Cowboy Bebop because it's already been said. It's it's a classic for a reason. And on that topic, is Cowboy Bebop the movie? I think in certain places it's called Knocking on Heaven's Door. It's not here, I think, at least in this release from manga. Uh, I want to say it's manga, actually. I could be wrong. Okay, it's not actually released by manga. Now, I want to say the movie specifically is a little bit of a um, rarity these days, because I don't think they've reprinted this for quite some time. I bought this over ten years ago, so... Um, as you can imagine, it is out of print. I also kept this receipt, which isn't mine, because I'm pretty sure I bought this for like two or three pounds at a second-hand place, but this is some kind of receipt from somewhere. And of course, comes with the standard adverts for lots of other sort of uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, lots of movies that definitely aren't anime. But um, the movie, <clears throat> I think, is just as good as the series. It's... Um, it's beautiful. They had a slightly higher budget for this as well, so I mean, it looks like a movie. Sounds like a movie. If you're a fan of the series, you know, this is a no-brainer. I really enjoy it. I think it's one of my favourite anime movies as well. Um, it's just the aesthetic and everything. It's the perfect kind of thing. It, it takes place in canon. It is canonical, but it's, you know, it doesn't break or change any of the canon, so... Highly recommended to watch this if you can get your hands on it, I suppose. Next up is a series I kind of enjoyed. I didn't love, but I didn't hate either. And that is D. Greyman. Now, sort of in the same vein as Beck Mongolian Chop Squad, the annoying thing with this collection, which, as you can tell, is season one and two, uh, which is episode one to 51 there. The annoying thing with this is that it is just half of the series. Um, they never, to my knowledge, localise the second half of this. So if you want the rest of it on DVD, you're either going to have to import the Japanese one, um, or, or watch it online. I kind of never got round to it, just because that was another 50 episodes. And as I said, I like this series, but I wasn't in love with it. It's, um, it's one of those, I don't know, maybe I need to re-watch it again, or maybe I need to like read the manga or something. It was fun, and I wouldn't get rid of this box set, but I don't know, it, it's not super high up there. But let me know in the comments, maybe 
if there are other D Grey Man fans out there, maybe I've heard it does pick up in the second half. Actually, it gets even better. But again, it's annoying. Although I did buy this again over ten years ago, so there's a decent chance that maybe part two, uh, oh well, season three and four, I guess, are actually out now. Maybe there's a Blu-ray with all of them on. I don't know, but you know, maybe I'll look into that. But I enjoyed my time with it. It's just sort of I wasn't desperate to watch the rest really. And next up is a series that I feel like was kind of very big for a couple of years, but has been sort of forgotten about now, and that is Darker Than Black. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, this is kind of a... Um, it's almost a superhero kind of series. It's about people with superpowers, but it's kind of grounded as well in that each power has a cost. Um, so for example, there's a woman that can change the weather, but she has to eat a cigarette every time she does it. And um, it's stuff like that. It, it adds quite an interesting layer to a genre that, you know, obviously has a lot of stuff out, you know, in that umbrella by now. But yeah, Darker Than Black, it's quite a gritty series as well. It's 26 episodes. Um, you might have heard of it, but I really enjoyed it. I watched it the first time and didn't really get it. I wasn't super into it. But I rewatched it because I happened to find this on DVD for really cheap, a second hand place a while ago. And after rewatching it, I realised that actually I like it a lot more the second time. There's a lot going on. The it is a little bit dense in parts. There's the, there's a lot of sort of background story going on that if you don't really pay attention can kind of pass you by. But honestly, I really enjoyed season one. However, season two, Gemini of the Meteor. I enjoyed more. Now, I heard online that apparently people really didn't like this series, or a lot of people said it was a lot worse than the first series. But I don't know, I personally really enjoyed it. I thought, so it's a, it's a shorter series, as you can tell from the size. This is 12 episodes and not 24. And I think it's kind of helped by the fact that it is a shorter series. Um, it's a bit more to the point, and I don't know, I, I thought the plot went, you know, at a really nice pace and everything. I personally really enjoyed it. I don't know if it's, you know, well known as being a bad sequel or anything, but um, yeah, I I think of the two, I enjoyed this one more. But uh, again, I guess, let me know in the comments if you have seen both series and what you think of the second one, because... You know, when people said it was bad, that was about 10 years ago again. I have uh, i don't really keep up with the anime community much anymore, but, uh, but hey. Anyway, on to the next one. And that is a series that, honestly, if you uh, got into anime, you know, late 2000s, early 2010s, is a series I think you probably somehow own, either on DVD or Blu-ray, and that is Death Note, which I think is also considered somewhat of a classic these days. And kind of like Cowboy Bebop, I think I'd consider somewhat of a gateway anime as well. This is, I think, a perfect series that those who aren't really into anime could quite easily watch. It is quite grounded. It's got supernatural elements, obviously, but um, I'm going to start showing you the box because it is fucking huge. So there are 37 episodes, but this is back in the day where discs only had so much space. So. I will start arranging them. This is going to be difficult. We'll, we'll take a quick look at each of the covers, but um, chances are you've heard of Death Note uh, at the very least, if not watched it. I do highly recommend watching it if you haven't. I think it is a phenomenal series. This set in particular, I think, is sort of Quite a common one that did the rounds for a while. I'm pretty sure I got this whole set for something like £20 or something ridiculously cheap like that. When um, when it was still fairly new, I want to say. Just realised, there's two Ryuks. That's, that's weird. Okay, the, this... Uh, I can't remember what the other three covers are though. Aha, yeah, we got Nia. Or N. Um, it's been a while since I've watched this series, actually. Especially the second half of it. I um I think I I think I've seen the first half more than I have the second, if that makes sense, because I'm pretty sure I started rewatching it in English and kind of got midway and then got distracted by another anime or whatever. 
But those are the nine discs. There is also an art book, I want to say, or illustrations, sorry. Uh, made for the anime kind of storyboards and stuff. Obviously, the manga was very popular as well. But yeah, I, I really like this set. I know it's on Blu-ray now and you can get it, you know, it's a lot smaller. But I've got a soft spot for this. This is kind of peak when I got into anime and started collecting, kind of. So it's got, it's got a lot of memories for me, really. And again, this might be out of print, but honestly, they made so many of these, I think, even if it was out of print, I don't think this is a particularly rare DVD collection, uh, DVD set, rather. But, you know, I, I still got a soft spot for it, even if it is a massive brick. And next up is a series that I really enjoyed. I watched this a couple years ago and kind of just took a chance on it because, again, it was on sale. A lot of the DVDs I have in this collection do happen to be just sort of blind buys that I sell for really cheap. And that is Desert Punk, or Sunabozu, I think is the um, name of the actual anime in Japan. This is about a sort of post-apocalyptic world where everyone lives in the desert, basically. And it's about the Sunabozu, the desert punk, sort of, who is a mischievous guy who just wants lots of money and loves big boobs. Um, it's a 24 episode series. It is very cool. I think visually it's quite interesting. It's got, uh, it's, it's got a slightly wacky sense of humour that I think really works. Um, I don't know if it's a series that everybody would enjoy, but this... I know, I, I fell in love with it. I went into it expecting to enjoy it and came out of it sort of it being one of the best anime I'd seen that year, really. Yeah, definitely highly recommended. If you see this for like fairly cheap, especially, give it a go. And next up is a series I don't think needs much introduction. That is Digimon. So this is specifically season one or adventure one, as fans call it. This is the first 51 or 52 episodes, I can't remember how many. But this is uh, where it all began, I do believe. This is sort of uh, the first... It's the first thing you think of when you hear the words Digimon. I think these are the original Digidestin that everyone is familiar with. At least everyone that's familiar with Digimon, I guess, you know. There's not going to be a remote tribe in... Um, in so oh, that was part two. Okay, well, you, you get me, though. Not going to be like remote tribes somewhere who are like, Ah, yes, Tai and Agumon, they were my favourites. But, um, you know, for those of us who grew up around when I did, you know, this is the series that people think of when they think of Digimon. But, of course, as a big Digimon fan, it's not just season one I have, but also season two. So this is known as Adventure 2. As you can see, there's a few uh, new members. TK and Kari uh, do do follow over from uh, Season 1. Personally, I enjoyed Season 2 more. You had the Digimon Emperor, who I really loved the um, the plot, you know, the, the arcs with. There is the uh, alternative cover, of course, with Davis and Vmon. <coughs> Wormmon was also one of my favourites, I think. Stingmon is easily one of my favourites. Uh, I changed the cover to Cody because Armadillomon, as a kid, was my favourite Digimon. Wormmon slowly became my favourite Digimon from Adventure 2, but, uh, you know, this, again, is Season 2 in all of its, uh, all of its glory. The downside with these collections is this is the English dub only. There's no Japanese version, which I think are being released, at least in America. Now, whether we'll get them, I have my doubts. I don't think we'll ever get that. But, I mean, these are the dubs I grew up with, so this is kind of what I love. Even though there's a lot they've missed in the dub or changed or whatever, I still really have a soft spot for these two. Along with Digimon the Movie. Now this is another one that I think splits fans, some people really dislike the dub because it was a combination of three Digimon movies, technically. Chances are, if you did grow up in the early 2000s, you'll be familiar with this movie. It was pretty much everywhere. Now, I know the movie cover is well mocked for its weird depiction of Terriamon and Lockmon. They are looking kind of weird. 
But honestly, I love this movie. I bought this DVD on a bit of a whim a few years ago, and apparently it's got quite expensive now because they never re-released this, really, so, um... It is a bit of a collector's item. I don't think it's super valuable, but it's still a little bit rare. And I do love the movie, so I'm glad I've got it. But of course, the Digimon doesn't stop there. They also have Digimon Tamers on DVD as well. Again, this is only the dub. Uh, sadly, we don't have the subs of any Digimon stuff over here. But this is a hell of a series. Uh, chances are, if you're a Digimon fan, this might be your favourite, and honestly, I think it might be mine as well. It's, um, it's just a lot of fun. It's very different from the first two. It was worked on by the person, uh, or director, I want to say, of Serial Experiments Lane, and you can definitely tell this does have a darker edge to it, but I think at the same time, it's the right kind of balance between dark and a little bit goofy, but I do love Tamers, uh, especially as Terriamon and Gargamon are some of my favourite Digimon like ever. So um, definitely recommend, if you've never seen this, you're interested in Digimon, definitely give Tamers a go. And of course to round out the UK releases of the Digimon series, we have Digimon Frontier, which is season 4. Now this one is a bit more controversial. I think uh, some people really dislike this. It took a different approach in that the Digidestin went into the digital world, but they sort of fuse with their Digimon, so they become their Digimon as opposed to having partners. It was definitely a bit different, and I bought this DVD kind of blind, because I'd never seen any Frontier before. And honestly, it did feel kind of different, but, I don't know if this is controversial, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was quite fresh and quite different to the point that it didn't really feel like it was competing with the other series, if that makes sense. I, I enjoyed Frontier, I don't think it's my favourite, but I think it's a very solid one, especially the second half does get quite serious and quite interesting as well, so I mean, again, if you are interested in Digimon and stuff, I would give this one a go, just, you know, maybe start with Tamers or Adventure 1 and 2, but I think Frontier's pretty good. And rounding off the Digimon block are the Digimon Adventure Tri movies. So, I'll go through each of them as I talk about it. So this is a movie series that came out quite a while after uh, Digimon, obviously, this is kind of a it's a follow-up, so these are the Blu-rays, and they each come with a poster, so I'll pull these out as I speak about them. Uh, so we've got that, uh, hang on, I have to change my camera angle. So that is the full poster, along with the four art cards that comes with part one. There is also part two, uh, and this, oh, hang on. Uh, and this is the poster and art card that part two come with, which I really love. Um, one day I might get around to sort of framing all of the posters and the art cards, especially these. They're so clean. I love the like design of them. And then of course there is part three, Confession, which is a very yellow theme going on. And inside, these are the art cards and poster that comes with that. Again, going for the yellow theme. Uh, and this kind of completes the Digimon. Um, so if I do get a frame set, I might either have like all eight next to each other or four in each frame or something. Best Boy Tentamon. And of course, there is Movie 4, Loss, which, as you can see, has a sort of red theme. So these are all reversible covers as well, I forgot to say. So the cover is actually the same as that, but I reversed them because they have reversible covers just because, you know, it's more interesting to pull around and have two covers rather than see the same cover twice. And these are the postcards, uh, art cards and posters that comes with this. Complete with doubles of Biomon. Uh, I actually checked online after I opened this up and it turns out this is kind of a common mistake. I think they misprinted. I can't remember. I want to say Gabumon was the other one, which is annoying. I, if I see part four for really cheap uh, and sort of, you know, 
new or still with the postcards in, I might buy it just so I have all of the postcards. But it's such a petty thing that I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on it. And of course, there are two more movies that I haven't actually seen yet. There's part five and six that I do actually have. They're still wrapped. And that is because I watched these four, then I moved house. And for some reason, put part five somewhere I just couldn't find for about a year or two. And it always bothered me because I didn't really want to buy part five again because I knew I had it. Uh, and I fairly recently found it again a couple months ago. So basically, I'm going to have like a weekend or a couple of days where I sit down and rewatch these four and then the last two as well. Um, so look forward to that in next year's one, maybe. But honestly, I really enjoyed the Troy movies. They are a bit slower. They're more more character focused than the older series. There's a bit less action and stuff. But personally, I quite enjoyed that as well. They do feel like different movies, if that makes sense. Whilst they are continuations of Digimon, they are kind of their own things as well. I really love these special editions of each movie. You can get a pack with all six in. I think that's quite cheap now as well. So if you just want to watch the movies, maybe consider that. But I bought all of these knowing that uh, they'd come with posters and art cards and stuff. And maybe one day I'd display them. I really love the look of the movies as well. They're very clean and sharp and modern. Um, but you know, I know not everybody loved these, but still, I really like them. So next up is a series that also needs no introduction, Dragon Ball Z. This is season one. Now I do have season two still in a shrink wrap. And that is because I got both of these on a very, very good deal. I think I paid something like £10 for season one and two. But then I kind of started thinking and realised the Blu-rays apparently are a little bit better. They're smaller and, you know, by now I think they've got quite cheap as well. But chances are, if you're into Dragon Ball, you know of the orange boxes, I think these are called. I know some purists say that these aren't that good and they're like the old DVD releases that are no longer in print are the best ones. But, I mean... I, you know, I just like Dragon Ball. I've actually not watched all of DBZ. I've watched all of Kai. But when I saw these on DVD for such a cheap price, I thought, you know what? Maybe I will watch all of Dragon Ball Z. But then I realised it might be kind of expensive and I might just go for the Blu-rays instead. But um, this does cover all the way up to the start of the Freezer Saga. I want to say, um, you know, I, I don't need much more introduction. It's pretty good. It's not the best way to watch it, apparently, but I, I thought it was perfectly fine. And now for a quite controversial series, and that is Dragon Ball GT. So this is the sequel. This is the anime-only sequel to Dragon Ball Z. Um, this is season one and two, which is all of GT. Now, I bought this because they were, I think, buy one, get one free or something. And I was like, well... I've never seen GT, I want to see it. I really like Super Saiyan 4, like the, the look of it, so I want to find out about it. So, Season 1, weirdly, for some reason, the audio on this is slightly pitched up, and I can't find online it being a major issue, so it might just be this batch of DVDs, but I don't know if I want to really buy it all over again, if that makes sense. And Season 2 of this is the Baby Saga. I think that's the one... Even people who dislike GT kind of thought was the best of the series. I agree there. I thought Baby Saga was pretty cool. Um, I'm not I'm not a massive lover of GT, but I don't hate it with a burning passion either. I'm just kind of... I like it. You know, maybe one day I'll rewatch it, or maybe I'll buy it on Blu-ray or something, if there's a decent deal or something going on. But I don't hate GT, but then I'm not like a super Dragon Ball fan. I really like Dragon Ball, but I'm not the type of person that would get into online arguments over GT. I just thought, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I like Super Saiyan 4. Uh, right, on to some movies. So this is Dragon Ball Super. Oh, actually, it is Dragon Ball Z, isn't it? Resurrection F. This is the start of Super. This is technically the second of the new movies. I don't have Battle of Gods. I keep on a lookout for there's a Blu-ray double pack of Battle of Gods and Resurrection F. I bought this because I saw in the cinema and this was on sale but the Blu-ray wasn't. I do love how slightly gaudy the cover is. It is difficult to see. Um, 
Oh, did I? I can't remember if I changed. I think I did, yeah. So there you go. That's the regular cover. You've probably seen it if you like DBZ anyway. I personally quite enjoyed this film. I do love Golden Freezer. Uh, it's the first DBZ film I saw in the cinema, actually. So, um, yeah, I really like Resurrection F. I do need to get it on Blu-ray one day, but uh, this is a nice version of it. I think it is very, very over the top. Kind of like Golden Freezer, really. And I think the best Dragon Ball movie, hands down, which is Dragon Ball Super Broly. Uh, which, it's such a good film. So, I think ooh, this version does come with a poster, which I actually have um, up in my room. But, I mean, the poster is just the cover, so you don't really need to see the poster. That's the alternative. Oh, yeah, no. So, that's the flip cover but this has got the legal stuff this one doesn't and this also comes with stickers i believe they are indeed stickers you've got golden freezer you've got super saiyan god super saiyan vegeta ssg ss goku and brawly as well um hands down my favorite dragon ball movie i think not only does it work as a really good dragon ball movie but it kind of works on its own as well it has a self-contained story, but like it is a fully fleshed out story, as opposed to just an excuse for a fight. Even though the last like hour of the movie is just a fight, it is so good. If you if you like Dragon Ball and you haven't seen Broly yet, what the hell is wrong with you? Definitely go out and watch that. I I love this thing. I'm glad I have a sort of slightly special edition. I know there's a slightly fancier one, but I'm happy with this one. And the penultimate addition to my collection for this episode, which is part one, is the Dragon Dentist. Again, this is an old the anime special edition. So it comes in this very cool case, which is an extension of the cover. Comes with this special edition uh, uh, second disc as well, along with a poster, which is very clean. And a kind of companion guide, so it's got character info, and it's also got kind of, um, it's got an interview with Hideaki Anno, who is the director of the movie, the guy that did uh, Evangelion and Shin Godzilla. It's a really interesting, so it's kind of a two-part OVA slash movie, uh, and it is about people who live in a magic dragon and fix their teeth. It's definitely a bit out there, but honestly, I recommend giving it a go. It's got a lot of very interesting ideas. It's a little bit trippy, but yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And again, I went in blind because I got this from a mystery box, but I'm glad I do have this special edition. I might frame this one day as well because it's a really nice poster. And the final item of this episode, Durarara. Another one that I've got sealed because I finished watching the series uh, not too long before I bought this on Blu-ray. But this is season one. I haven't actually seen season two yet, but I really enjoyed season one. So much that when I saw it uh, in the all the anime stall at a Comic-Con, I immediately bought it because I knew I'd want to watch it again. Ironically, that was a couple of years ago and I haven't rewatched it yet. Maybe. Maybe I re may rewatch it soon. It is very stylish. It's, it's such a good series. There's not much more I can say about it really without spoiling a lot. But I would recommend giving it a watch. And that wraps it up for part one of my anime, DVD and Blu-ray collection video. Stick around for part two where we're going from E to whatever letter is I feel like makes the video long enough but without going too long. Unlike this one which probably went on too long. Thank you guys very much for watching to this part though. I will leave a link to other playlists and stuff at the end and uh, in about a week I think part two should be out so stick around for that. Hold on, it's up to you. But until next time... Goodbye.